Welcome back to Sable Kings, everybody. And we are here back in Palm Corner for what is most likely going to be the rarest palm planting of the year. Dad, do you really think this is going to be the rarest? I do think so, yes. This is my favorite palm, I will say, that uh, outside of our folifera that we planted just two weeks ago, if you guys joined us. Uh, this is one that I, has been on my list for a long time. Um, I was able to get a Butea Jubea last year, early last year. Planted it uh, in, the, in the summertime, got through the wintertime, and we'll show you later. It looks awesome, looks incredible. But I've been trying to find the, the, other, uh, the other cross of this palm, so I finally did. So this is a Jubea Butea hybrid, everybody. Uh, so if you come a little bit closer, you can see how different this is from any regular just a butea. Uh, just the fronds are totally different. There is no, there is no, you know, blue color uh, curvature. There is no curve or recurvature, as they say. Um, and this just looks like a young jubea. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to watch this this thing grow out. But this is from a trusted source locally that has had it for a long time. Uh, and I want to say. He told me this is a five-year palm. So for everybody who wants things to go fast, yeah, take a look. Five years? Five years of growth, yeah. So, you know, as always I say, you know, people always email me and they want sables, uh, but they want them to be 10 feet tall. And I always tell them things that are hardy are always going to take longer uh, when you have robustas and stuff like that and things that go faster. They're always uh, not nearly as hardy, but in this case, this is a very hardy palm. I believe the Jubea itself is probably the hardiest of all the of the pinnate palms. I think they're hardy down to about 10 degrees. There's a couple of them here in DFW. Uh, and we have a little micro climate here. We got trees on both sides of our property, which help to shield out a lot of the wind. So if you zoom in over, or not zoom in, pan over here, you, you can see behind this, uh, this hybrid, there's a line of trees all the way across and that helps to shield it and this is on the south side that's on the north side so so we got a good block of winds on both sides so um, the, the other reason why i'm planting it here is the butea jubea is over there it's about seven feet six feet from a power outlet uh, so this is one of the this is going to be the palm number three that is going to be protected in the worst of winters so I have a power outlet right behind him. Uh, I don't know, 15 feet away. I toss a fleece over it. I will throw a heating cable on it and uh, I'll protect it. But everything else, as you know, my mantra is once my, once my sables are outside, they're out on their own to their own devices. So this one will be protected. People have these things in New Mexico um, and uh, they, they they do good they burn a little bit in like the 10 degree range so that being said i'm excited about this thing i've been waiting for a long time finally have one so let's get this thing in the ground so as always if you come and take a look at the dirt we have a lot of clay so look at the color of that right we got ton tons of clay so what i did is i got a bunch of compost over here i mixed it together as i dug the hole some good compost and vermiculite as well since these uh all the every pinnate palm is as much as i understand uh likes to have drainage we have a lot a lot of a lot of clay so obviously i want to give it plenty of drainage so that being said i will do what i did last time and i may do it over here actually Ugh, this guy's heavy he's been hanging outside for a while he was brought inside I believe for our 10 degree weather but outside of that this guy's hardy and we'll see how quickly he's able to grow this year as you can see we're just gonna pull him back and there you go so, nice here's the root structure Come doesn't have at this big old tap root down here yeah I Don't expected him much. to have bigger now roots. what's gonna be interesting is hmm planting this guy down on the ground here. I thought we're, he would have bigger gonna... roots. Well, he does not, huh? Yeah. So I thought it would be like the fill fair and be like root bound or something. Yeah, these guys take a while to get to, to that stage. And you want to be careful not to break any of these roots. See, so 
What you want to do is... Those are is, big. Yeah. So I need some dirt, actually. This is going to be the challenge here. <laughs> I'm going to put them on the side. Let them rest. These big old tap roots are very interesting, huh? So I'll end up just putting them in here. Giving tons of organic kind of material all over the place in, in the hole. Carefully put them in. By carefully, I mean very carefully because if I drop him, I can break any one of his main roots. That is all those years of that growth. And the reason why these palms are so <coughs> hard to find and expensive is gone. And these will not going to recover once you break, once you break those roots. So carefully set him in like that. I think he's about straight as he's gonna get. All right, straight. A little bit of dirt over here, maybe. You just want to be careful with this guy. And again, down the road, you can always fix him. You know, he'll bend himself to the light anyway, ultimately. And what I'll do is after I, after I plant this guy, um, I'm going to go get some mulch. I'll drop some mulch around him. I'll give him some water and some fertilizer. And as you can see, I took the compost that we have here in the ground. And I mixed it half and half with, uh, or I mean, I took the compost I had and mixed it half and half with the dirt that we have in the ground or clay. So we get some of our native soil. And I'm going to give them some of the <coughs> and vermiculite. We'll mound it up a little bit. And we're going to hope that I did a, a good job in planting him. I didn't hit any of the main roots there that's going to be the hope next couple of weeks we'll see how he's doing but I, I think i did an okay job i didn't feel anything or hear anything rather what would you hear if one of the roots cracked or well, broke you would hear just like a a crack right it's, it's like a twig like a twig breaking pretty much yeah it's essentially a like a hard piece of wood, kind okay. of. Uh, and yes, you would hear that crack. The, that's a dreaded crack. You don't want to hear that. Especially when you've got a problem that's got crack. such large roots. Yeah. Those big main tap roots. Those things took, <clears throat> I want to say this thing is five years old. So it took about five years to, to, to grow one of these. So That's pretty small for five years old. I know. So if you haven't looked up what a... a um, a Jubea chilensis is, which is the parent of this palm. It's the uh, Chilean wine palm. Uh, they are native to Chile, as, as the name implies. Um, they grow to be very, very tall in the 100 feet plus range. They get big. And the wow. trunks uh, end up being something like 8 feet wide-ish. I mean, they can get huge. Obviously, it's over a period of a long time, but they get big. They're known to be these like giants. Um, and they grow in, in Chile, obviously, as the name implies. They're native there. They grow super high in the mountains at higher altitudes. And that being said, they can take some cold weather. So as I mentioned, I mean, people had these things in DFW for our 21 freeze. Um, there's a guy in DFW who had just a pure Jubea chilensis, um, which uh, I believe he just threw a tarp over. So not a lot of anything. Hey dad, hmm. I think we have a Jubea chilensis over there. We don't. Oh, I thought we, I saw. We are gonna have one. I have a tiny, tiny seedling, oh, tiny. I thought the tag said Jubea chilensis. Uh, that was where I, I had hoped to put one. Oh, okay. Never so, mind then. Sorry. No, so there was a guy that had one of these in the freeze. Uh, he literally threw a tarp over it. Nothing else, just to keep the water and the ice off the crown. Which, by the way, if you don't know, these palms are not a fan 
of ice and water in the crown. That's what when you get that's when you get your spear pole. And as you can see, this guy is opening up this little spear right here. This he's been working on this since I got him in early December. So he's happy. There's a brand new spear right behind it right here. If you can see right there. So um, for anyone that knows when you got a palm that's putting out two fronds at a time, that's 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 good news. That means it's beginning it's be beginning to actually jam along. So that's 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 really good news. So that is pretty much it, guys. What I'm going to do is, as I mentioned, I'm going to get some rocks. Probably this is kind of what we tend to do around here. Our property has a metric ton of these rocks. Now I'll just take these rocks, put them around. We have an automatic lawnmower, which you'll see at some point in my videos. Uh, that it drives around, it cuts the grass automatically. So these little rocks and all this stuff helps keep our lawnmower um, off of stuff. And uh, plus it helps to keep the mulch all contained. So I'm gonna just go ahead and mound these up. Hey dad, Yes. why do you need mulch for plants? That's a great question there, my helper. Um, mulch is good because it helps to keep, keep in the moisture. <clears throat> And mulch also helps to uh, help. We get heavy, heavy rains here in Texas. Uh, so the mulch helps to keep the dirt in place from all the rain and all the floods and stuff like that. Heavy rain will take your soil and just all push it away. And having mulch is definitely helpful because the mulch is going to keep the soil where you want it to be. And at the same time, keep the soil moist and wet, uh, keep in moisture when we have those 100 degree days, 105 degree days constantly. So, that being said, there it is. So this is a Jubea um. crossed with a Butea, a JB, um, planted here in DFW on February the 19th. Uh, it looks like we're into spring, got awesome weather coming, got some rain this week. I'm gonna put some mulch in this guy, and I'm sure, I guarantee you, I'll be doing an update. Uh, on this palm in the coming weeks so you guys can see how it's growing. Hopefully I did a good job in terms of uh, of the main tap root there. That's it. So thanks for following along everybody. Wait, Dad, are we going to show them the BJ? Sure, you can go walk them over there. Explain what you're doing. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys a Butea Jubea hybrid, which is the opposite of the one we just planted. Notice the differences. This, this, the, oh wait, let me get a good view. The, this is curved and it's got a bluish tint. And how old is this? Uh, I want to say probably, it's been in the ground with us not even a year, but it's probably five years old already. Okay, so a little bit bigger than that other one. A lot bigger. Yeah. A lot bigger. And it'll you, grow quicker because this has has Butea as the parent and Jubei is way slower. Yeah. Just hardier. Yeah. So you'll notice that the new fronds are green like the Jubea Butea, but the older ones, like I said, have a bluish tint. Probably so blue, yeah. yeah. It's also got yellowish kind of down here. And um, this is kind of like a, why is it so old there, blurry. This is a darker color. And it's got teeth. Yeah. It has a couple of teeth toward the bottom. That is from the, that's the, that, that is the lineage of Butea and the Jubeas have, have no teeth at all. Uh, they don't have any teeth whatsoever. So you could tell that this has, has Butea as the parent. Yeah. So we'll make sure to update these as we go along so with that thanks everybody and appreciate you all joining along um if you like our video please like it and subscribe to our our channel um, i'm going to go and plan a whole bunch more sables after this so come join us bye everybody